Samsung Galaxy A54 versus A55 speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, one. Now, if you were wondering which one is the better pick, well, clearly the A55, but they almost feel like totally different phones with the A55 having these shiny premium edges, bigger screen. Feels like they went way more premium this year, but the difference here in performance is we're looking at a four nanometer um, 1480 over here, Exynos CPU coming up from the 1380. Now the Galaxy A35 actually still has the same chip from the A54, which I haven't been too impressed with. The A55 has been much more a better performer to me so far than the A55, and you're going to see that in this video. Um, definitely booted up first over the A54. Right. So let's go ahead and take a look at their in-display fingerprint sensors. You can see the A55 is faster to unlock, but both of these, man, they kind of look a little slow sometimes when going in. If I'm being honest, they're not the fastest looking. They're not even close to the fastest in-display fingerprint sensors. But the A55 is slightly snappier here than the A54 for sure. Now, the A54 actually hasn't got the One UI 6.1 yet, um, but it's still on 6.0, and it has the latest updates that I was able to get so far on this. This actually came out of the box with 6.1. So it's slightly different, um, but overall I was doing some preliminary testing and the differences aren't as big as you might think in terms of animations. Overall kind of scrolling through the general home screens, they're not too different because both have a 120 hertz display. Although I find the consistency day to day to be a little bit better on the A55, especially when first booting it up, the A55 tends to be um, a little bit less uh, choppy. As the A54 warms up, it's pretty good. Um, also, I noticed the A55 actually has um, a bigger kind of like sharper feel. It's a little bit less comfortable. And also it looks like the camera hole is bigger, honestly, if I'm being totally honest there. But generally just scrolling through the software, there's not a major difference on the home screens. All right, so here on the app test, everything is closed out for both devices. Let's go ahead and hit up calendar. You could see faster on the right. And we'll swipe out of there. Pretty much the same. Let's go into calculator. A little faster on the right. We'll go into clock. And we'll go into world clock. Alarms, stopwatch, timer. Now when you first unbox the A55, or if you had an A54 and you come to A55, it's going to feel like a big upgrade due to the premium feel. And Play Store did launch first on the left. Let's go to offers. A little faster on the left, books. A little faster on the right, games. A little faster on the right. And the bezels look a little more symmetrical on the Galaxy A55. Let's All right, guys, so let's go into Twitter or X. They call it X now. You can see first on the right. We'll hit my profile page. And a little faster on the right, Instagram. And let's go into my profile page over here. And let me go ahead and click my latest post. When you're kind of like navigating around, the A55 just feels a little snappier. It's hard to describe on video or even show all the time. Um, it just kind of like generally moves along quicker. And it's not because it's like a brand new phone. It's because it actually has a more powerful chip. That's what it is. It's not um, just because you've had that A54 longer. No, it's because the A55 has a better chip. And it just makes it a little bit more enjoyable, but it's still not a flagship or even FE level chip. So like a S23 FE level chip. So I think there's still work to be done here on the A series, at least for the A50 series. And you see now it's faster on the right. Let's go into Jetpack. Like last year, it was kind of like a little bit annoying. This year, it's not really annoying at all. So I would say that the A54's performance bothered me a little more than the A55, for sure. So they improved it enough to where it's more, it's a it's a more livable every day now with the Galaxy A55. So for that reason alone, I think it's worth the, uh, the purchase if you really want the A55. The A54 though has a smaller, more comfortable screen, I think the size wise. And also the curved corners kind of feel more, iPhone 11 like, whereas these feel sharper like an iPhone 12 or something like that. They just feel a little less comfortable. So the A55, while bigger, is less comfortable to hold, um, but it gives you more screen real estate. 
And also the Galaxy A54, this one's pretty close. That was near even. It could have been because of that pop-up though. Um, the Galaxy A54, weirdly enough, actually has a more vivid screen. Um, the a 55 screen is toned down just like they did with the S24, and this is a mistake. I don't know why they keep doing this. I understand, you know, even I have complained before in the past about oversaturation, but I didn't mean, like, take it away. What I meant is to put a mode inside of the uh, display modes and let it become this vivid for the people who like it, but then let it become this toned down look for the people who don't. And they kind of already addressed that a while ago with the natural modes. But now they're making the actual display um, too dull looking. It's not cool. Like it, it's like I put on Vivid. I'm like, is that on Vivid? Um, it just, just doesn't really kind of like make me feel like like the old days of Samsung when you just look at it and just like super pops in the face, vibrant. It's kind of like losing that. And I need to turn off auto rotate because this is getting <laughs> ridiculous right there. So that's just something I noted about um, the A54 is it's just more vivid, saturated screen. Um, so some people might like that more and free fire goes to the right on the galaxy a 55, but there's no denying the fact that the a 55 does feel like an upgrade. That's a fact. And we'll go to PUBG mobile here. Neither one of these are going to be gaming performance powerhouses though. You'll want to spend a little bit more for that, but these are really good. Just daily Samsung phones. For those of you who don't want to pay premium Samsung level prices, these are going to be really good. Also, if you want a um, cheaper Samsung, they have the A30 series as well. But that now you're starting to get a little bit um, weaker on the Samsung game. And so these loaded at a similar time. It's just this one was loading that up. Let's go into Geekbench 6. And we'll go into 3D Mark. Faster on the right. And InShot. Faster on the right. And Speed Test faster on the right. So you can see just kind of generally a little bit quicker on the A55, but again, where it really showcases itself is in just the way it moves along day to day. You can kind of feel um, that difference. It just kind of feels a little bit more, like it's got more power that it doesn't really kind of like chop up a little bit. The A54 can have these weird choppy like animation sometimes and lags and just it just doesn't feel quite like it moves quite along like the a55 so let's go ahead and go through the ram management here now we do have eight gigabytes of ram on this phone as do we have actually this one's six gigs the new one i have is eight gigs so pubg looks like it was reloading a little chop there on free fire good lock enhancements to remove the double swipe gesture is uh, enabled as well and you can see Subway Surfer starting to reload. And I've said in my previous videos, if you've been rocking with the channel a long time, I used to talk about with the Note series, like I think it was the Note, what was it, the Note 8? It was that blue Galaxy Note with the yellow pen. When Samsung phones start getting 8 gigs of RAM, that's when they start performing a little better. This one with 6 gigs, you could see this. Like, what is this is what I'm talking about right here. And just look at that, that. Even that animation coming back was a little slow. Now you can speed this up by going to developer options and lowering the transition animation duration scales to 0.5x. And then you can really kind of make this feel a little faster, but it still has a couple of chops here and there. Day to day, does the average casual user gonna care for this price? Probably not. Um, but if you're looking for something a little bit more performance oriented, there are phones in this price category that are more powerful. Now, A55 goes to 8 gigs of RAM, and you should be able to notice immediately how much nicer the RAM management looks here, along with its better chip and RAM. Also, One UI 6.1, you're probably noticing a better performance. It just runs along nicer, and it's near, it's not quite at, but getting a little focus right there. It's near flagship level, which is quite nice, honestly. I think they're really closing the gap here. Maybe in like a year or maybe two years, this will be like flagship performance. Because like, honestly, I don't think this is becoming the marquee feature anymore. I think the, the main feature is becoming cameras, AI, battery. And they, they know that because they didn't put AI on this phone, which is a big setback if you want to be on the cutting edge 
of technology. This one not giving you AI is definitely a step back compared to a lot of the other Samsung phones right now. So we're in Geekbench 6, Android 14 on both. Both have an eight core CPU, but you can see this is clocked higher on the first cluster at 2.05 gigahertz. They also upped it to 2.75 gigahertz on the second cluster versus two and 2.4. That alone, having a higher clock speed allows this to run along a little faster as well. Um, so there you go. So we'll run the Geekbench 6. Don't expect blazing powerful scores, but when they, when we come back, we'll see what the difference is. So the Geekbench score is done on the A55 significantly faster than the A54, which is still running. 1137 on the single core and 3330 on the multi-core. Now, if we take a look at the single core, this is not quite as good as the S23 Ultra or even any of the S23 models, but closer to something like an S22 um, so a phone from a couple of years ago, even the Pixel 7 actually did a little bit better. This is almost exactly in line with something like an S21 phone. So a couple year old flagship is kind of what we have here on the A55 in terms of performance. Multi-core score is around 3330. If we scroll down, let's see what that's closest to. That's closest to like an S20 FE or an S22. So once again, like a two-year-old flagship here. Was anybody complaining about performance back then? Not really. You'll see here though on the Galaxy A54, it's about 600 points better on the multi and about 100 points better on the single. If we scroll down, the A54 performs more online with something like an S21 FE or maybe an S20 FE multi-core score. It performs something closer to like a Galaxy A52 5G with a Snapdragon or even something like a S21 FE. So these phones are not the most powerful, but they have respectable enough for daily performance scores. Okay, so the final Wildlife Extreme scores are in now and you could see not very beautiful overall score. 912 on the A55, 806 on the E54 with only a frame rate better performance on that, um, on the average frame rate. Now, if we go down, you'll see scores better than 14% of devices and 12% of devices on the E54. So the performance gains from the E54 in the benchmarks are not massive. However, the CPU ones are, not the GPU ones though. But overall, there's a lot of other bigger changes um, to the body, the feel, but I don't think Samsung really did a ton. They just kind of cleaned it up, polished it a little bit and put a nicer body on it. Um, they didn't really like take it to a super new level here. They kind of, kind of played it a little safe. You can see shutter speeds about the same. They even have the same level of zoom. They both have 50 megapixels, still macro cameras. Um, so yeah, overall, would you, should you upgrade? If you have an A54, you probably don't have to. But if you have an A53 or two, it's a good upgrade, I would say. And also, I do like the direction they're taking the A series with this more premium feel. I do think as we go along, like next year and the year after, it's gonna be like having a cheaper flagship option. It's almost like that already. So let me know your thoughts on this one down below. Do you prefer the A54 or the A55? And whatever other speed tests you wanna see with the A55, the newer kid on the block, let me know down below in the comments. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button for me and subscribe for more. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.